So here's the mount I was talking about. I already moved. You just pull this up and all out of the way. It looks like it's in really good shape, but I can't see all the way around it. So I'm going to go ahead and pull it off. So we pull out these three bolts and this bolt here. Of course, you're going to put something under the engine to support it. Another jack and a block of wood before you take any of this stuff off. So we'll do that first and then we'll, we'll knock these uh, bolts out and take a look at it. All right, so I already got the reservoir out of the way, like I said earlier. I pulled this bracket off. Goes down here, kind of gets in the way of getting uh, this bolt out. And I moved the power steering reservoir over. There's two uh, bolts here for that, just to get your uh, impact down. So that bolt goes in here. So that comes right out. That's 17, and then uh, the only other thing to hold, we got the 317s here to take out. So that should be it. That should pull right out now. All right, so there's nothing really wrong with this mount at all. So the rubber still looks really good on it. The seal looks good. Uh, this has got plenty of life left, so we're not going to change this mount. Um, so we'll hit the two in the back, and that should be good. So I'm going to go ahead and put this one back together. This one's definitely not needed, and uh, we'll uh, save her some money, and we'll get those two back ones and uh, button this thing back up. Turn it on or turn it off? Off. Oh. All right, so we're going for this mount down here. There's a 14 millimeter on both ends. It looks like there's two bolts to hold it down. So the first thing you do is, is put a 14 here on this bolt and open it on that side and go ahead and run that out. And then, you know, obviously you want to put a, like right before on the engine, you want to put a block under the transmission here and support it. And uh, then go ahead and run that out. And then we'll run those other two out and pull that up. All right. So that's, that's the one that goes this way. Two 14s. And so you pull that out first, and then uh, looks like you have one here and one back in there. So we'll get the uh, extension to get down to these. Should be just two holding it in there. All right, I got that first one out right here, and on this back one, I can't really get an impact on it because it's way back here, and you got to get a swivel on it. So I just put a long extension on it with swivel. And I'm just going to take it out by hand. Um, and then that whole mount should come out. But just get a long extension with a swivel, 14 mil, and it should come right out. I've already got it loose, so I just got to turn it out by hand, and then that whole mount should pull up. All right, here's that back one. Uh, you can see it's pretty ripped up pretty bad. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to take that middle bolt out first. Looks like it's a 14, just like the front. And then it looks like it has four holding it to the frame on this one instead of two. So the first thing we'll do, like I said, is take that middle bolt out. Uh, might be a little challenging to get an impact in there, but we'll see what we can do. And uh, anyway, unbolt that and then we'll go for the floor to the frame. All right, so I got this off. I, I misspoke her. I thought there was four to hold on. There's only three. There's only one on this side and then two on the passenger side right here. And you can see this thing's pretty wasted. Uh, so anyway, uh, you can do everything from the top. You just need long extensions. Uh, this one you don't need a swivel for. Just some long extensions to get up past your manifold. And you just, you know, take the, the bolt out here and then the three out here. And this will come out the top too. You can wiggle it through the uh, hoses and stuff. Uh, a little bit of finagling, you can get it out. So 
anyway we'll get the new ones and uh, put them back on and this thing should be a little bit better as far as uh, it must have been moving pretty around pretty well for this this one's pretty wasted so we'll get the new ones and uh, get it rolling all right, so this is the rear mount. We'll do this one next, or put the new one on first. We can see a difference here on, uh, obviously, on the uh, quality of the gas or the rubber. So we'll. S so I'll snake this down there and get the bolt started. All right, so the new one set down in there. I got the bolt uh, going across. I actually had to break out. I haven't. It's been quite a while since I broke out the old air ratchet. Um, to get down in there it's kind of tight getting down in there um but you can do it all from the top with the right amount so anyway i'll uh tighten that one up and then we'll hit those other three no and uh somewhere right here i can't see what i'm doing i think it's this one so now we're just going to run this one down so that's all three and the center bolt uh, so this back one's done. So now we'll move to the front. Alright, All right, so we're going to slide this one in uh, where it belongs. So, uh, get the bottom two started before you put the middle one in. When you put it back in. Alright, so I started the two bolts. You want to start those first before you put the center one in. It just makes it easier to line up. So we got the 14 in there on the impact on one end and opening on the other. That's tight. And then these two are 14s for the frame. And we'll hit those next. Tighten her up. Call this one done. So we got uh, on the back. You got to use a swivel to get to it. It's kind of awkward. So I'll just do that one first. So you just get your uh, swivel down there. Of course, everything's going to be in the way. So that was tight. And then you can pull your swivel off uh, for the front. You don't need it on there. All these bolts are kind of rusty. It keeps your sockets. You can get your finger in there to grab it. Just quit for a second. Go ahead. All right, so we're going to get this front one, then we'll be done. That's pretty much it. The only trick I would say on these, uh, when you're lining this middle bolt up, sometimes taking the tension off the uh, transmission with your jack underneath will help. Or get one of these picks and put it through there. That'll help to line it up a little bit. They're usually not too hard to line up. It has to be a little. But uh, yeah, so that's front and rear on this. We're not going to change the very front one because it doesn't need it. And uh, so yeah, this job's done. Uh, like I said in the previous video, we got to wait for that stepper motor. But uh, I, I want to clarify one thing on an estimate too. I'll bring you over. Stop. Go. All right. So earlier I said something about all the mounts being the same price. I didn't read this close enough. That's their uh, labor rate. Um, so that's not their actual mounts. Actually, they didn't charge too much, too much more for the mounts. 
65, 82, and 62. So they're not too far off on the price of the mounts. They actually, the front mount is cheaper than what I can even get at, at uh, O'Reilly. So that's actually a pretty good price on that front mount. Uh, but it didn't need the front mount at all. So if you take the 82 off and the 112, 46, what, they're, what they should have been charging is 352, 84 for the two bad mounts. Um, and like I said, we the mounts at, are about 45 bucks a piece at O'Reilly's and then labor for us. So anyway, I just want to see, you know, at that point she's saving uh, – Almost two hundred dollars on mounts that she didn't need. Um, so that, and then the heater core. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put that in the, in the heater core video. But like the heater, you know, the total here is seventeen hundred dollars, and they charge ten ninety, almost eleven hundred dollars for this heater core, which she didn't need a heater core. So the part for that through Mr. is one hundred fifty. So I don't know what they would come up with for labor changing it and. Uh, the actual what they would charge for the part because they're going to charge more for the part than 150 so regardless you're looking at eleven hundred dollar repair that, that really would be realistically maybe a three hundred dollar repair and then uh you know the mouse were 520 realistically should have been about a 350 repair so you're you know this quote our estimate is almost off it's almost off over a thousand dollars of what it should be and we, like I said, we don't know what they would have done with the heater core. I'm sure they would have replaced it and then came up with an excuse to change the motor afterwards when they found a mistake. I don't know that for sure. But uh, they didn't take the time. They told her she needed a heater core and didn't take the time to diagnose it. So at this point, I'm just going to not trust that they would do it. Um, so anyway, that's just my point on that is, you know, and she got this uh, estimate and she actually reached out to a few people about, hey, I'm getting all these different prices on heater cores. And nobody actually did any diagnosis on it other than someone flushed it. So it's always good if you get a job like this uh, to, to ask around and maybe uh, find someone that's willing to take the time to diagnose it and do a little research before they just start throwing parts at it. So you can see here, like I said, she's going to save well over $1,000 on this job. And it's fixed right, and there's all the thing, all the issues that it has will be fixed. So, uh, yeah, I don't know, I don't know what to say about it other than if you're gonna go these big chains, make sure you keep them in check, and uh, make sure that they're actually because, like I said, we don't know what they would do if, once they found once they replaced that and found that it was not uh, wasn't the problem. So anyway, that's just something to keep in mind when you go to these big chains. I always recommend searching out small independent shops. I mean, some of those are shady too, but try to find uh, a small, honest, independent guy to go to. Or if you're handy with tools like these motor mounts, um, pretty much anyone with a little bit of ability could uh, change those on their own and save themselves. If you go by their prices, you would save yourself uh, two, almost about 250 bucks over that. So, I mean, it's, you know, if you don't want, it's still not a bad, 350 is not really that. It's, they were quoting uh, almost an hour to change the motor mounts which that's probably book time it really only takes about 20 maybe 40 minutes to change both of them so i don't know uh but that's that's the industry and i understand that they charge book time and that's how mechanics make money if, if you're well if someone that never changed the motor mount would try to do it it, would, it maybe would take over an hour so you, I, that's i don't argue that point so anyway that's just uh, my take on this